Hey artists, today I wanted to talk to you about our temper paint. The temper paint is kept out here next to, um, on the shelves that are open. It's open to um, kindergarten through sixth graders. Uh, the temper paint this year is really awesome. Uh, it covers really well and it's kept up here in these pumps. Okay. When you need to get temper paint, you have a couple options. One, uh, people have been filling up cups and you are welcome to use cups down here. Um, if there's a color that's already mixed up to your liking, use that. Um, if you want to mix up and pour some paint on these, uh, these are trays that you may use. Um, and then you need to wash them out each class in the sink. And then you need to put them back. Um, if you want to get a new cup to mix up, um, say you're going to do a background color or a specific color that you're going to need to save, that's when you would use these cups. Um, don't be mixing up too much so we have an overflow in this area of where they're kept. Okay. Um, the temper paint is different than the acrylic paint. The acrylic paint is kept up in cupboard number eight. Acrylic paint has a specific setup um, in the cupboard. There is this list of 10 things that you need. You must wear an apron because acrylic paint is permanent. Cover your table with newspapers and then choose your mini cups. So start down here. You must start down here. In these little ones are all of the different colors of acrylic paint already poured for you. Looks like a couple over here. The red ones are mixed up with the brown and the black. Um, and then you would pour from the acrylic paint up in this cupboard. Um, up on the very top are the mini cups and the nicest brushes ever. These brushes. Um, are used for painting details. They are used um, for fine little parts of your paintings and we'll go over brushes a little bit later in this video. But this is acrylic paint. Um, over on the counter over there on the shelves is the tempera paint. There is a difference. Again, acrylic paint is permanent. Tempera paint is washable. They don't necessarily like to be mixed. Um, you should keep them separate. You should use acrylic paint only or tempera paint only. Acrylic paint is good for covering cardboard, good for covering canvases. It's a little thicker, it's not so much see-through, uh, but it is more expensive. So start with temper paint, if you can, on paper. Um, and once you've gained skills and ideas, then go on to the acrylic paint in the cupboard. This acrylic paint needs to be stored with the door shut at the end of each class so that the little ones don't think that they can use it. Again, the mini cups are tiny and we wanna use those ones for the acrylic paint because it doesn't take a lot of paint. The acrylic, the temper paint rather, we wanna use these big cups um, to uh, differentiate between the two. Now there are some mini cups that have gotten mixed up in here and there are some big cups that have gotten mixed up in here. But if we could try and keep that system separate so we know which paint is which, that would be helpful artists, okay? Really quickly talk paint brushes. So these are your general paint brushes kept here. These are really good for mixing acrylic or temper paint. Um, they're smaller paint brushes. These are the general ones left out for kindergarten through sixth grade. On the bottom shelf down here are your long handle paint brushes. This is where you're gonna find some specialty brushes. Um, thicker ones, ones that have different types of heads. Um, they're gonna be kept down here because they have long handles because they're not up there. And then in the cupboard up above again are the super nice paint brushes that need to be kept up there. When you are done using a paintbrush, you are going to briefly rinse it out in the sink this year and then they get in the hot tub to soak. Try and get them to stand up in the hot tub so that just the brush hairs are down and not the whole handle so the handle's not falling off. And then make sure, again, that you don't have paint all the way up onto the handle and onto there. So briefly wash it out. Oops, I just saw one in here. There we go. Get this guy standing up here so that he, um, again, his handle doesn't fall off of his paint. We also have over here in the clay section this is clay, right? Over here by the glazes are some specific glaze brushes. These brushes should be used for glazing. You could paint with them, but I would prefer you to save them for people who are glazing. Um, they work really well for glazing and they get into all those little crevices that you need to glaze with. So differences between paint brushes.
Let's talk care for paintbrushes. So these are some paintbrushes that have not been cared for. You may still use them, but they have not been cared for. First up on the top, we have a paintbrush that has not been washed out. Um, to prevent this, we should always put paintbrushes in the hot tub so that they um, do not get left anywhere. Um, the second one has some problems going on with the ferrule. Um, and so up here is the ferrule. And then here is where paint has gotten stuck up in here. And as you can see, um, it's all hard up in here. The brush, the brush hairs have actually stayed pretty nice, but the um, actual ferrule part's all stuck there. This one has not been treated nicely at all. People have probably been doing a lot of this, and we'll go over that when we do painting techniques. But if you're scooting around on the bottom and your hair is way up here, that's gonna cause the hairs to fall out. Um, along with this one that has probably been just stored um, upside down for a while. Um, it was probably not nicely cleaned out because it's hard. Um, it looks really crazy. And then once again, all that paint has gotten stuck up here in the ferrule and it's dried really hard, which is keeping these brush hairs together, um, but it has caused the rest of them to fall out. Hi artists, today we're talking about acrylic and temper paint. Um, first of all, I want to tell you is to use small amounts of paint. So if you're pouring the uh, temper paint, just a half a pump will really do. And acrylic paint, if you are blending, like I'm going to be showing you, um, and you don't want to mix up a bunch of paint in a little cup, um, using tiny bits of paint. You can always go back and get more. Uh, second thing I want to tell you is to use one of those old kindergarten paint brushes. If you are going to be mixing up a lot of one color, say you want to do your whole background um, an orange color, you would pull from the sides so you don't contaminate all of your yellow and pull and make a mini little tornado in the center when you are mixing up your tempera paint or your acrylic paint on your palette. Okay, this will make sure that you're keeping your nice paint brushes. See how I got all that paint up there into the ferrule where the brushes disappear into the um, inside of this metal part that's called the ferrule. And that'll make sure that um, my popsicle, or you could even use a popsicle stick, but that you're keeping your other paint brushes nice. Okay, I'm gonna set that one over there. Um, last thing I wanna tell you about painting is no matter what brushes you use, um, you could use a flat like this one. Um, or you could use more of a rounded um, paintbrush. So either one is fine, but whatever you do, always load your brush just at the tip. So this one got way more than the tip, especially when you're using tiny paintbrushes. You want to make sure to always be using the tip of your paintbrush and keep these ones with the clear handles, the really nice expensive paintbrushes, really nice. So here's some different techniques for you to be using. Um, first one is dry brush. So you're going to take your brush and you're going to load your brush just on one side. So I'm just going to go in this orange and I am keeping the top side of my paintbrush clear and the back side is where I'm loading up my brush. Okay, so that way when I am brushing, it will start showing up on the bottom. You can see those dry brush where and up here it was wet and then my paintbrush starts getting, and I'm just feathering it out to create this texture of this dry brush. Okay, another way you can do that is to um, offload some of the paint onto another area of your palette and come back and you'll get that dry brush look. Um, this could be good for feathering or other um, techniques. Another thing is um, over or under painting. And so, um, again, I'm not even washing my paintbrush out but I am going to show you, um, there's a flat area of red. Okay, I'm gonna do one layer, and this is my underpainting, and I'm just going to let that dry for right now. Um, another way to do painting, another technique is edging. When I see artists using masking tape, that is one way to create a nice clear edge, but I wanted to show you guys a good way to edge. So I'm gonna grab a pencil here, and I'm going to draw, um, a sort of a edge that I might be having on my paper. Okay, maybe some mountains or a landscape scene. And I'm going to, again, use my paintbrush to load it up. And I'm going to start at one side, I'm gonna look at where I'm gonna pull my paintbrush. So I'm gonna line up that edge, I'm gonna push down and see how the paintbrush feathers, and I'm gonna pull it along that edge slowly and I can always go back and then go over it again. 
okay? And that's gonna help me paint in one of these areas. Okay, and then if I wanted to go back and do another area, I can, I know I still have some orange, so I'm just gonna briefly um, make sure that my paint is loaded on the edge. And then I'm gonna come back in, and again, I'm going to put my bristles at the edge and drag it along so that I can outline an edge in that shape that I wanted to create. Okay, oops, sorry artists, a little bouncy. And that would be one way to edge things in, okay? Another way would be to pick a different paintbrush um, and you could simply outline that shape. Let's say that I wanted to um, go back and outline, so I'm gonna start by pulling Sorry again for the shakiness. I just bumped my stand. And pulling. Always pulling and loading just at the edge of my paintbrush. All right, let's talk about blending. I know lots of you like to create blending areas. So I'm going to start by blending with my, loading my paintbrush with my color. Again, I'm only loading one side, um, just like when I dry brushed. Um, I try not to load both sides because I find there's not as much control. I'm gonna blend by using a horizontal method. So I'm pulling across in my area. And then I start with my lighter color always. And I go back and I just briefly load. So I have two colors. I load on some of that darker color. I start down here. And then I'm gonna start working it up into the lighter color. I'm just going over it gently. And that darker color will overpower the lighter color by blending. Textures, textures are a really fun way. You can use any of the paint brushes for this. You don't have to use a nice paint brush. We have sponge paint brushes. We have big, thick paint brushes. So I'm gonna show you some of those. Here's some fun, thicker paint brushes to use. Um, you're gonna load up your paint brush similarly how you would another one. And you can create all sorts of textures by using the tips. This could be a cool tree texture, okay? Um, maybe by brushing like this, same paintbrush, just different methods by going more, by holding my paintbrush more at uh, an angle instead of straight up and down. The last thing I wanted to show you is back up here to the under over painting. So we only did the under painting part. I want to show you that once it's dry, you can go back and add more layers and this adds a lot of interest. So if I didn't under paint it first, this would be what my yellow looks like. But because I under painted with red, my yellow has a lot warmer texture. I'm just briefly going over it so it's not mixing. I do have a little bit of red in my paintbrush yet because I don't like to use water to wash out my paintbrush. But you can see the different um, colors just by the way that the red is painted underneath versus a bright white paper. So experiment with that um, as well and experiment with different textures and blending um, to add interest to your paintings artist. Happy steel building.